Welcome back to another edition of Eat My Shorts, right here in the Ranton Chair. Smoke me a filter tube of doom in place of the lucky strike. Sorting the world's problems out. Trying to keep what's left of my sanity. <coughs> well, I'm sitting here charging my phone, or I was, and uh, perusing the old YouTube before the live streams come on tonight. You know, Camo Carl, Terribly Tactical, Mad Chad, whoever the fuck else comes on. And ex NYC OG Prepper posts a video about what them little mices have done to his bag. Well, I've got a fun story time about mice, and it has not much to do with preparedness. Uh, it does, but it doesn't. But uh, for those of you that are like have an aversion to heavy drug use or you know bad language, you know, like no judgment if you don't want to hear it. But I will tell you right now, there's a reason why I have a war on mice. Now, those of you that know me, or maybe if you don't, and you're just tuning in here, I fell off a ladder when I was about 18, almost 19 years old, and I broke every bone in my fucking back. And the only way I could walk is to wash either a bottle of painkillers and a bottle of brown alcohol down on an empty stomach to get up to go have my morning pee-pee. Okay, and it wasn't a small bottle of painkillers, and it wasn't a small bottle of brown liquor either. This is how much pain I had to experience to get up to go to the fucking bathroom every day. Everybody all together now. Hi, Billy. Uh, we got that out of our system. So, it, being a doper, um, if you're a smart doper like I was, although I was a dumb doper too in a lot of ways. We'll get into that at some point, I'm sure. <laughs> you have your getting loaded supply and then you have your when times get hard supply. Okay. I'm going to share some secrets with you about me that maybe you didn't know. Um, most of you know I was an injection drug user for a lot of years, from the age of 14 to 27. I didn't start on the amphetamines until later, until I was basically of age, you know, like 21. <clears throat> Before that, it was mostly just fucking heroin and pills, right? Because, you know, if it's worth poking, it's worth smoking, right? And, you know, I, I always had a little supply, an emergency hit of dope, hidden in case that, you know, like I needed it now, there was nothing on hand. And, like, I was going to go into severe detox. Like, it was, it was one of those emergency do not use unless the world end hits, okay? I had a couple of them stashed. Um, so my old room was like a, I don't know, it was maybe 8 foot wide by like 12 foot long. 10 foot high ceilings, okay? It was basically a wall to wall gun rack with my mattress, a TV up in the top end of my closet. My closet was turned into like my uh, emergency gear supply thing. And I had a little desk in the corner by the heat vent uh, where my chair was and my computer uh, that me and my first wife also filmed many glorious pornographies on to, to pay for our drug habit, right? This is how long ago this was, okay? So <clears throat> my desk drawer was what you would call basically a suicide note for help. Okay, there, there was bottles of liquor, packs of cigarettes, loaded handguns galore, you know, knives, uh, uh, books, you know, ranging from, you know, Mein Kampf all the way to, you know, Sun Tzu's Arts of War, you know, just, just random shit that you would have in your drawer, okay? You know, cigarette lighters, matches, whatnot. But in the little pen holder in my drawer, I always used to keep, a couple of morphines. Now, they're time-released, okay? And yeah, you can defeat those when you shoot up. And trust me, it's a pain in the balls. But if you're a doper and you need to get off or you need to get unsick, you're going to do it. Because that's just what I had access to at the time, all right? We always used to keep a couple of the purple 30s or like a, like a handful of the purp or the blue 15s, the robin's eggs, we used to call those. And... In the underside of my desk, where you pull the drawer and you'd look around, you wouldn't think there was a lip in there. I carved a lip in there. I had one clean syringe, and I had two emergency 100 milligram black morphines wrapped in aluminum foil. And they were wrapped heavy duty. Like, you would never have found these fucking things. Like, the local drug dog literally fucking could not find these damn things in my desk. Okay, that's how well they were hidden. So... One day, the prescription bottle had runneth dry, the booze had all dried up, 
and I had not yet figured out the joys of methamphetamine. And and I promise this is a story about mice and why I hate mice. Okay, like I said, this is, this is some backstory for you. Okay, I was hurting. I couldn't even get up to go to the bathroom. My dog, the, the big old lab pit mixed bastard Rufus, uh, the big lovable dumbass, used to have to drag me so I could go take a leak. Okay, and I was like, oh, God, it's raining. My joints hurt. I finished a long shift at work. Oh, I can't fucking get up. Desk. And so I'm crawling on my fucking hands and knees, and I'm dragging myself to my desk. And by the way, dragging yourself naked across a hardwood floor, tuck your junk in so you don't get a splinter. Uh, I was smart enough to know that in my addled state of disrepair. All right. Get to my desk, pull myself up to my office chair, get there, and I'm getting ready to cook me off a shot. And I open the drawer, and I look down, and there's a little mouse, and he's laying there dead and smiling. And he had started nibbling on one of my morphines. I thought, you little dope addict, no good, son of a bitch, motherfucker, stealing my dope. I thought, well, this is no good, right? So, so like, my blue morphines, those were gone, because that's all I had left. I reached up, and I grabbed my rig out of there, and I remembered, ooh, the 200, the 200 milligrams, the old blackies, you know, the old uh, fucking death makers, we used to call those. <laughs> so I fired myself off 200 milligram shot. Mind you, at this point, I was so addicted to heroin and morphine that at one point, I was having to mix 1,000 milligrams, that's one gram of morphine, with one gram of methamphetamine to get unsick. This is why I tell you people, if you're going to do drugs, either go all the way or just get off of them and get help. Okay. So I'm rummaging around. All right. What else has this little motherfucker got into? Well, he got in my gun cabinet and he started nibbling on one of my surplus rifles. Fucking gun cabinets aren't mouse proof. Son of a bitch, you know. You know, I get in my closet. Well, I had a box full of emergency cans of ravioli, peanut butter crackers, you know, shit like that. Beef jerky, you know, stuff that you keep on hand, like when you don't want to cook and you want to hide in your room and not be around other people. You know, and gallon jugs of water that had fucking Gatorade powder for them. Because, you know, you need your fucking electrolytes, especially when you and, you and your first old lady are filming pornography. Trust me, you're going to sweat. <clears throat> you know, shit like that. Well, the little motherfucker had tried to chew his way through my cans of ravioli. Didn't work. He did chew through the beef jerky bag most of the way. Now, this is back when they were thick plastic. Nowadays, they're paper thin and they're nothing worth there anyway. I saw a priced uh, fucking bag of beef jerky at the gas station. It's over 20 bucks and you don't even get a whole pound anymore. That's like, yeah, no. I'm good. Little motherfucker, you're starting eating my cheese and crackers and my peanut butter crackers. You know, I like them things. You know, they're just like a nice little fucking pick me up snack, you know? Like for when you just want something after a can of ravioli cold out the can, you know, it's nothing fancy, trust me. And he had gotten in there and he tore everything up. A little some bitch had tried to get through my duffel bag, and thankfully it's British military surplus, and he couldn't get at my clothes, right? So uh, he he tried to fucking also. I mean, this little bastard went on a rampage. And the one thing that really pissed me off is that he chewed through a gallon jug of water, but just made a little pinhole leak, and all of my stuff started getting wet, including my USM9 gas mask, which I had with a brand new filter in it, in case the SWAT team ever kicked tear gas in it. This is how prepared I was for this shit. But one day, this little son of a bitch, unbeknownst to me, while I was sleeping, had torn through my gun cabinet, my emergency food, my my tried my duffel bag, tried my gas mask, and then he got in my dope and he died. Yeah, I was unamused by this. But I learned something new that day. See, because if you're going to keep shit for long term, you're going to have to plan on bugs. And you're going to have to plan on mice. And mice, to me, are, are the worst of it. Because, you know, bugs are bugs, right? You can squish a bug. And mice are crafty little bastards. And they will steal your dope. But I hope, uh, if not educational, at least you could find this entertaining. Like I said, I've been clean a lot of years now, and I'm not going back to that life. I don't know, when I'm stuck outside living in a tent outside Boise, fucking freezing to death a year later, and somebody offers me a clean rig and some dope, eh, I'll live stream it. I don't really fucking care. At that point, I'll have lost all hope and given up anyway. That's why I'm planning ahead, so I don't have to. And if you like the video, you like the video. 
And if you don't like the video, you can eat my shorts. And uh, word of the day, since I haven't done one yet, Stuart Little, because uh, that little mouse caused me fucking grief to no end, right? Lost a shout out to Stuart. I'm sure he found this story more funny than you should have as a grown up, as most of you do. And uh, I'm going to go sit upon my butthole and charge my phone. So have a wonderful day. God bless and uh, eat my shorts.